All right, today we're going to replace the turbocharger on this 2012 Chevy Cruze with a 1.4 liter engine. So you can see we've got a replacement turbo here. It comes complete with the exhaust manifold. We've got the wastegate actuator here, uh, the control solenoid, and even the bypass assembly in here. So it's a pretty complete unit. It also came with installation kit here, which includes the exhaust gaskets, any type of seals and O-rings in here. Uh, even comes with the oil feed supply line, which is very important. We're definitely going to need to replace that. And it comes with a warning label here uh, and some pre-installation instructions. Always want to pay attention to that. Good tips like understand why the previous turbo failed. You know, did it seize up? At that point, we're absolutely going to want to double check the oil feed. We're going to double check the oil feed no matter what. But this particular turbo had some underboost codes intermittently. So we're really suspecting an issue with uh, the impeller or the wastegate uh, leaking a little bit there. So we're going to pay attention to the installation guide. We've also ordered a new uh, boost sensor. We're going to replace that very quick and easy here in the duct work. Uh, while we're here, let's do it all. I'd hate to have a comeback or ever sent you a comment due to a faulty sensor somewhere down the road. And we're also going to replace the PCV line here. This actually gets clipped onto the turbo itself, and we've got some lines going here. So uh, while we're in here, let's go ahead and replace that. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the duct work off the turbo here. I'm going to unhook all the vacuum lines, disconnect the electrical connectors, uh, remove the heat shield here, and then we'll pick it up again. All right, you can see we've got the, the duct work and a bunch of other stuff out of the way. So now I'm gonna work on the oil lines. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove the oil uh, return line here. And this is gonna be a, a T45. And so I'll access this here from the top. Or rather, excuse me, this is the, the part of the oil feed line yet. As you might guess, the, uh, the return is going to be on the bottom. And so use the T45 there. And now I will use an inverse uh, Torx bit here. This is an E10 to, to remove it from the engine block here. So I was able to kind of sneak that out of here. So we will uh, set this aside for now. At some point, I'm going to use it actually to test for flow while we're on there. Um, and then really the next thing we need to do is we'll remove this clamp here, which holds the turbo to the exhaust pipe. And this is actually a close coupled cat system. So we're going to raise the vehicle up and we'll go underneath. And then there's, uh, there's a retainer down there holding that cat close to this. And so by removing that, that's going to give us a little bit of flexibility to move the exhaust away from the turbo assembly. We'll also get the return line removed down there. And then we'll come back up top here and get our manifold bolts off. And then we'll be ready to uh, remove the assembly. All right, here we are underneath the vehicle, and you can see we've got a big uh, plastic shield here. So we're going to uh, remove a couple eight millimeter bolts, a couple plastic retainers. We're going to get this out of our way, give us some more access here. Okay, now we've got the shield out of the way. Next thing I'm going to do is remove this uh, nut here. You can see there's another bracket up above, but by removing just this nut here, that gives us just enough play and allows us to pivot this enough to get it out of the way. So I'm just using that uh, a 10 millimeter socket here, allows me access there. Now I'm going to remove the oil drain tube and I'm going to use my E10 quarter inch drive socket with an extension and a little swivel here. And I'm going to remove the bolts from the, uh, the oil return line here and I'll drop that out of the way. I'm going to leave it still connected to the engine block though uh, because we're not replacing it right now. Uh, we're going to leave it alone 
And then there's also a coolant line in there, which is very difficult to show uh, here on camera. So when we get the turbo off, I'll show you the tricks and tools required to do that. Okay, now we're back to the top side of the vehicle here. And there's one more thing we want to mention regarding that coolant line. There's a hold down clamp here and a, and a hose clamp. So I'm going to use uh, uh, pliers here to loosen up this clamp and we'll slide the slide that off there. And then I'm going to take an E10 again and I'm going to remove this bolt. And that was kind of hidden behind the oil feed tube originally. So we'll get that out of there. And now that'll allow me to loosen this up and I remove that off with the turbo. And then really the next thing to do is remove all these 10 millimeter bolts holding the exhaust manifold to the cylinder head. So we've got all the nuts off here and there's there's a couple little uh, nuts here used to hold the heat shield in place. So I'm just going to pull them out of the way, find that it adds a little bit of clearance. Now you can see we've got this, this support bracket here which goes over all the studs, kind of slide that out of the way. And then at that point really it's, it's loose. We need to do a little bit of uh, creative maneuvering and wiggling here to get, get this off the exhaust the rest of the way. But with uh, some creative maneuvering and holding our tongue just right, uh, we will pull this up off and we'll be ready to show you the turbo removed and laying on the bench. Okay, so now we've got the turbo out of the, the engine. Uh, see it sitting up here in the front of the vehicle. Uh, you can see these coolant lines a little bit better. Now these are up against the engine. Remember we removed this bracket, pulled the hose loose here. Uh, but I mentioned that there was the other line that we really couldn't see real well with the camera. And so here's the line. This is where we're going to take a 17 millimeter socket and use a special holding tool so it doesn't twist, um, as you see in the image shown here. Just wanted you to be aware of that uh, before you get too far down. And so uh, typically it would be transferring these over, but in this case we went ahead and ordered new coolant tubes as well. Uh, just kind of a best practice. So really the only thing I really need to transfer over is uh, the support bracket here. So I'll get that off, set that off to the side. And then I'm going to show you uh, what went wrong with this turbo. We're going to inspect the impeller here. And then we're going to actually hook up our old oil field feed line. We're going to disable fuel and ignition, crank the vehicle over, and actually make sure that we've got good oil supply before installing our new turbo. Okay, so as we look on, uh, on the exhaust side of this turbo here, you can see the cute little compressor wheel here. This is, after all, a 1.4 liter engine. Uh, but you'll notice some cracks in here. And this crack actually goes all the way into the wastegate area here. So imagine when this thing heats up and it expands and actually uh, creates a little bit more of an issue here. So we're going to set this turbo aside, do our necessary prep work, and be ready to install the new turbo. All right, you can see we've uh, reconnected our oil feed line here. And I'm going to take a, a measuring cup here. And I've gone ahead and disconnected the ignition coil assembly and removed uh, the injector fuses. And so that's going to disable the engine from starting or spraying any fuel in here. So remember, my hand's right up against the exhaust here. Um, and so now I've got my measuring cup here. I'm going to kind of cover it with a rag because it's a banjo fitting and we don't want oil flying into the catalyst and uh, all over the vehicle. So uh, we're going to be very careful here. Now I've got an assistant inside the vehicle. And we're going to crank it, and we're going to monitor the amount of oil that comes out of this feed line. All right, go ahead. Okay. Oh. And as you can tell, with just a little bit of cranking, we got quite a bit of oil out of this thing. So we're going to refer to specifications here. But just by shooting from the hip, I'm going to say we're looking pretty good here. Okay, now we've made sure that we've got adequate oil going through the turbo. We've also verified that the drain tube is free and clear. Can't get oil in if we can't get it out. Uh, we've gone ahead and cleaned all the gasket mating surfaces. We've 
installed the new exhaust seals, also the new uh, oil drain seal. It's actually clipped on the return line. Uh, we've got our new coolant tubes installed here. And so now it's time to wrestle this thing back into its home, get everything uh, sealed up here, and then uh, we'll button it up and, and do finishing touches here. So now we've got everything mounted in place here. We've gone ahead and torqued all the bolts to spec. We've hooked up the coolant lines. We've hooked up the oil feed line here. And we've gone ahead and drained the oil. We've installed fresh new uh, 5W30 oil, new oil filter. We've installed a new air filter. And now it's time to go ahead and crank the engine over and we need to pre-lube this turbo. We've not hooked up the oil return line on the bottom of the turbo here yet but we've still got the, the ignition disabled, we've got the injectors disabled. Remember we pulled those fuses earlier. We're gonna go ahead and crank the engine over until we see good clean oil coming out of the oil return on the bottom of the turbo. Once that's done, we'll know that the turbo's been lubed. We can hook up that return line, clean anything off, and finish hooking up some of our lines here, and we're ready to start the engine. All right, we've got everything buttoned up. We've gone ahead and installed all the shields, all the air duct work, all the lines, everything like that. Remember we bled or pre-lubed the turbo and now we've got the vehicle running here. No exhaust leaks. Everything's sounding pretty good uh, but we're gonna let it idle for approximately five minutes. What that's gonna do is allow the oil to circulate through the turbo, bleed out any uh, air pockets that might be in there or anything like that and just just kind of do a little bit of a break-in period here. So I'm gonna let it idle in the bay here for about five minutes while I actually go out and uh, put away my tools and clean up after doing the job here. Uh, once it's all said and done, then I'm gonna go in with my scan tool, clear out any trouble codes that may have been set by the previous faulty turbo. And then, uh, then we'll take it for a test drive, and verify that this thing is operating the way it's intended to. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it takes to replace the turbo on this 2012 Chevy Cruze with a 1.4 liter engine.